you so much, Jose. Uh, I want to again begin by appreciating you and uh, all the members who have actively participated in the early morning session. Uh, I also want to appreciate everyone who has been able to wake up this morning uh, to make sure that um, we support the process of knowledge generation and uh, sharpening each other. They say iron sharpens iron. Uh, but before we start with the, uh, the new session, I want to begin by appreciating our senior colleagues. Uh, I want to begin by appreciating Professor Joseph Ntai for his efforts to make sure that we actively involved in this process. I also want to appreciate Professor Laura. Uh, Professor Laura, we appreciate you and we really thank you for logging in every morning to support learning. Uh, Professor James, we want to appreciate you. Uh, Dr. Gideon Nkruzinza, we appreciate you. Dr. Joshua Gukina, we appreciate you. Dr. Ahmad Walgembe, we appreciate you. Uh, we also appreciate Dr. Ahmad for making sure that most of our efforts, uh, all the things behind the scene, because the coordinator of many, most of the issues here. Uh, this morning, I also want to appreciate all the students. I want to appreciate all the participants from different parts of the world and then within Uganda and the universities in East Africa, West Africa, South African region and the rest of Africa. So last week we had a very interesting presentation by uh, one of our own, that is Kadu Mili, uh, where she was presenting a about biomass energy access and household productivity in rural Uganda. And again, this week, uh, we shall be having uh, one of our own, uh, that's Geoffrey, taking us through his work. Uh, I believe that the, as other, other senior colleagues, login i'll be able to acknowledge them but uh, let us take this opportunity to welcome geoffrey geoffrey i hope you are logged in yes yes please okay please so you can go ahead um, and share your screen and then make your presentation uh try to use uh within 30 to 40 minutes thank you all right, all right. Uh, good morning, everyone. Uh, thank you very much, uh, Doctor. Uh, before I proceed, I would like uh, to thank uh, the organizers of uh, uh, these meetings for the opportunity uh, to share with the with members uh, my work uh, for 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 their input, uh, so that I can uh, improve um, on my uh, proposal. Thank you very much, members. My name is Mubinzi Joffrey, a PhD student in energy economics. And my topic is household demand for energy in Uganda, empirical and theoretical aspects of demand elasticities. I hope I'm audible enough and I can be heard by everyone on the platform. I'll start by taking you through the outline of the presentation. I don't know why the screen is not moving, sorry. Just a minute.
all right? Uh, uh, sorry about that. I'll start by taking you through the outline of the presentation. Uh, we shall go through the background of the study. I'll take you through my problem statement. From the problem statement, we shall look at my research objectives. From the research objectives, the research contribution, then the theoretical uh, framework, and uh, finally, uh, the methodology. So that is the outline of my presentation today. Uh, I will start with I will start with the background. Um, as Africa's population uh, is uh, rapidly expanding, and uh, we are realizing uh, more urbanization, there is need for reliable and uh, sustainable energy supply. Uh, that's why we are saying that. Uh, Africa's rapidly expanding population needs reliable and sustainable energy supply. So the need for that energy is becoming greater than ever. And that has been uh, documented in the World Energy Outlook 2021 by the International Energy Agency. So this energy is needed not only to drive the uh, continent's economic development, but also to provide modern energy services to the large numbers of Africans currently living without energy. We realize that all we, according to the African Energy Outlook, that is 2018, 20% uh, of the world's population is in Africa. And Africa accounts for only 6% of global energy demand and little more than 3% of electricity uh, demand. Uh, we also noted that average energy consumption per capita in most African countries is well below the world average and largely comparable to that of India. So we are a full continent, but our energy consumption per capita is a relatively co comparable to that of India. Now, as part of the background still, bioenergy is the largest source of energy in Africa today. And this meets 45% of primary energy demand and over half of final energy consumption. That was reported by the Africa Energy Chamber, a report produced in 2021. 20, uh, uh, and lastly, on the same slide, the average energy consumption per person in the most African countries is well below the world average of around two tons of oil equivalent, which I abbreviate as TOE. Of around two tons of oil equivalent per capita, and is broadly comparable to India's average of 0 0.7 tons of oil equivalent per capita. And that was according to the World Energy Outlook 2021. The slides are not are not moving. Let's see. All right. I think we are there. Um. Again, under the background, we have it that electricity accounts for around ten percent of Africa's total 
uh, final energy consumption. But per capita electricity demand in Africa remains very low. So we're saying the per capita electricity demand in Africa remains very low at around 550 lower towers and 370 of this is in sub-Saharan region. This is in comparison with 920 kilowatt hours in India and 2,300 kilowatt hours in developing Asia. And this was also reported by Africa Energy Outlook. Um, at the regional level, still, Sub-Saharan Africa's per capita electricity consumption has barely increased during the last uh, decade. And this uh, was reported in two, 2022, this year, by the African Chamber, by the African Energy Chamber. So it has barely increased during the last decade and presently around 665 kilowatt hours per capita. Electricity demand is estimated to have fallen by over 2.5% in 2020. But well, this is known that we had the COVID issues. So this was due to the impact of the COVID-19 pandemic. And we also note that households rely on highly polluting traditional energy sources such as the hard biomass, which constitutes 45% of total primary energy demand in Africa. How about Uganda's case? Let us uh, uh, look at the Uganda's energy mix or Uganda's energy consumption mix. Uh, just like uh, uh, the previous uh, point, Uganda's energy consumption mix is biased towards biomass. And this contributes 88% in form of firewood, charcoal, and uh, crop residues. This was in the Ministry of uh, uh, Energy and Mineral Development, 2019, annual report. So this, uh, this has adverse effects, adverse socioeconomic implications on health, environment, gender and household productivity. In fact, annually Uganda loses 120,000 hectares of forest cover, of which 60%, that is 72,000 hectares, is due to charcoal and firewood. And uh, that's why we need to provide a solution to this. Uganda, we also need to note that Uganda has one of the lowest electrification rates in Africa with a current access rate of 28%. Now, we are saying that there is limited productive use of electricity, especially in rural areas. And this negatively affects demand growth, affordability and uptake. That was uh, noted by the Ministry of Energy and Mineral Development. So this lower demand growth compared to the planned generation capacity uh, surely exerts pressure on consumer tariffs. And this is a key a point to note. Um, Problem statement. Uh, we note that the use of clean power and renewable energy sources would reduce the reliance on wood fuel for cooking and ultimately protect natural resources. As noted by uh, the 2019 2020 UNHS report by OBOS. And indeed, clean power would improve the health of women through reduced exposure to smoke from wood fuels. The other um, important point to take note of is 
the Sustainable Development Goals agenda, that the SDG number seven, first of all, SDG number seven, if we look at the target, requires member states to ensure access to affordable, reliable, sustainable, and modern energy for all. Specifically under target 7.1, members are expected to ensure universal access to affordable, reliable, and modern energy services. The National Planning Authority has cited this, has quoted this in the NDP3, and the Uganda Bureau of Statistics has cited this in the UNHS report. Furthermore, electricity generation capacity increased. It's on record from the NDP3 that electricity generation capacity increased from 601 megawatts in 20, from 2010 to 8, 1,839 megawatts in 2020. And is further expected to expand to more than 2,650 megawatts by 2027. Those are the projections with a planned commissioning of more than five uh, power plants. Then there are also more efforts by the government. We have the rural electrification program that, that is in addition to uh, other efforts by government to increase electrification and access to, to energy. The government, government rural electrification program has also increased connections to the national grid by over 60%, that is since 2009. And the annual growth rate is reported at 14%. Now, despite all those efforts, and the beauty there is in, 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 in using uh, clean energy and smart and technology and fuels, despite all the above significant progress in access to energy, the proportion of the population that relies primarily on clean fuels and technology stands at only 0.6%, of which 0.2% are females, 2.1% males. So this further indicates that there is a significant surplus of electricity generation compared to the demand for electricity. At 100 kilowatts or kilowatt hours per capita, Uganda currently has one of the lowest rates of, electri of electricity consumption per capita in the world. And uh, automatically this leads to limited productive use of electricity, especially in rural areas, which negatively affects demand growth, affordability and uptake. And indeed, this low demand, low demand growth compared to the planned generation capacity will exert pressure on consumer tariffs as reported by Uganda Bureau of Statistics in its UNHS report. Uh, we go to uh, the research objectives. The central or the general objective that I'm looking at is to examine household demand for energy in Uganda. And the specific objectives are as follows. Number one, to analyze household energy demand and identify the main factors affecting household energy demand in literature. So this will, uh, mainly uh, be a systematic uh, review combined with a meta analysis using the meta uh, analytic uh, uh, design. Then to empirically estimate energy demand in Uganda's household sector and calculate price and income elasticities. Uh, this will use uh, the Uganda National Household Survey data, uh, specifically the elements that uh, look at energy 
uh, to achieve uh, this objective. Then the third objective is to analyze the energy choices for lighting and cooking made by the different income groups in Uganda. That is uh, the third objective. Research contribution. This research enriches the literature on energy demand elasticities by employing a metanalytic research design on aggregated and disaggregated household energy demand studies. Scholars or empirics have looked at household energy demand um, in two ways. There are those who have uh, looked at household energy demand using macroeconomic data, and there are those who have used micro data, the disaggregated data, like the national household survey data. And those different uh, uh, categories of researchers tell quite a, a different story. So my research comes into a try and understand the, this variation in price and income elasticities for both aggregated and disaggregated data and to identify some of those uh, key factors that affect household energy demand. So the second contribution is that the study makes a methodological contribution to the literature on household energy demand by employing the censored quadratic almost ideal demand system, abbreviated as QAIDS. This was developed uh, last year, 2021. 20, uh, uh, the research further found no evidence of any study on household energy demand that employs the iterated linear least squares estimator to estimate income and price elasticities of energy demand. And this research uh, comes in to bridge that gap. The, I, uh, the ILLS, or what we call the iterated li linear least squares estimator, is by a scholar called Koch Robin, 2015. And this estimates an almost ideal demand system with endogenous regressors. So um, in most cases, studies have shown that when you uh, cut out estimations of energy demand using uh, disaggregated data, there are tendencies of endogeneity. Now the ILLS or idealist linear least squares estimator comes in to uh, solve that problem. Theoretical framework. The underlying framework of this study derives from the standard consumer theory, clearly documented in Lancaster, 1966. This describes how consumers make choices. The consumer selects the band of goods and services which maximizes their utility given their level of income. And the consumer's problem is that of how to maximize utility subject to a given level of income and the price of the commodity. That is why we uh, have been talking about the income and price uh, elasticities. Um, this uh, consumer theory is supported by, or is applied along with two hypotheses 
That is the energy ladder hypothesis and the energy stack hypothesis. First of all, the energy ladder hypothesis provides a theoretical framework for explaining the transition from traditional fuels to modern fuels and the devices inside the households. And the energy stack hypothesis suggests that rural households do not switch fuel, fuels or energy types. When I talk about fuels, I uh, synonymously mean energy types, but more generally follow multiple fuels or energy types through a uh, stacking. Um, I'll give you an illustration of what I'm trying to talk about. So like I said, um, according to consumer theory, when income increases, the consumer usually chooses uh, uh, to purchase more, 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 more of superior goods than, uh, than uh, inferior goods, right? And this uh, theoretical framework explains how the consumer progresses from primitive fuels to transition fuels to, and to advanced fuels by the energy ladder hypothesis and the energy stack hypothesis. I think that is enough about the energy ladder and the energy and the energy stack uh, hypothesis. So uh, then I, I present to you uh, the household energy uh, demand cycle from Chukwemeka and Osuji 2020, which shows um, how uh, the households transition through uh, the household energy uh, demand cycle that the energy status of a household is affected by the household demographic st uh, status of the household. And we have the two uh, energy sources. This is the traditional sources and the modern sources like the electric uh, energy. Then we have uh, the household energy demand concept. And this is where uh, objective number one is going to play a role in analyzing the empirical uh, studies uh, and look at both the energy ladder hypothesis and the energy stack hypothesis to identify uh, the key uh, variables. Then from that point, uh, we shall look at the energy demand elasticities using uh, our data from the from UBOS, Uganda National Household Data. And here we shall look at uh, the own uh, price elasticities, the cross price elasticities or the cross elasticities and the income elasticities. So from that point, um, literature gives it that after the own elasticities, cross price elasticity and income elasticities, the household or consumer makes a choice, makes a choice. Uh, this is categorized as luxury, necessity, normal, but um, in relation to energy as a, a modification of uh, uh, Osuji's model, the household will make a choice to either use the traditional sources or modern sources. If uh, that is, and in that case, that would be a, 
the, the energy ladder. So that is the household energy uh, demand cycle. Uh, we go to the methodology of the study. Now this study is underpinned by the positivism research philosophy. That is because all the variables of interest can be observed and objectively measured. And the objective and perceived reality of household energy demand calls for positivism research philosophy. This has been considered by other researchers and being a contested area, I have managed to capture about six recent studies on the same. Um, the study, as far as research approach is concerned, the study will employ a quantitative research approach by drawing from deductive inferences. Uh, we continue to the methodology, uh, but uh, the, the, the approach I'm taking is that uh, I, I, I am following, I'm looking at each objective and how it is going to be achieved or how we're going to analyze each of these objectives. Uh, I'll refer to objective number one to analyze household energy demand and identify the main factors affecting household energy demand in literature. I call this a meta-analytic research design. Uh, just like I previously said, this will involve systematic literature review and meta-analytics, uh, a model of which I mean, we'll have not included, but uh, uh, most of the meta-analytics in literature include uh, models. The data types and sources, empirical studies will systematically be collected, obtained from a variety of databases, including the Web of Science and Google Scholar, using keywords, energy, demand, price elasticity, income elasticity. We shall scan the abstracts and look at uh, the entire uh, articles and the biographies to identify those articles that qualify. A, a flow diagram to show this uh, approach will be included in the main document. The analysis here will include systematic literature review and meta-analysis. Here we'll use survey methods to profile related to profile related literature of household energy demand. This will test two established hypotheses, that is the energy ladder and the energy stack hypothesis. And this uh, will be best, these tests will be best for the findings uh, within those uh, empirical studies that have already been carried out. And those uh, results will give an overview of uh, whether uh, we or whether we are moving towards the direction of energy ladder or energy stack hypothesis. Objective number two, to empirically estimate energy demand in Uganda's household sector and calculate price and income elasticity. Literature has suggested well, that systematic uh, review uh, 
maybe other other uh, variables will be identified other than price and income. But so far, there is evidence that price and income are key issues or are key constructs or factors that affect energy demand. So we shall use a cross-sectional research design. This is because the data collected by Uganda National, Uganda Bureau of Statistics uh, uses the cross-sectional uh, research uh, design. So under data types and sources, Uganda National Panel Surveys, 2019-2020 data from the World Bank Micro Data Library will be used. This is under the Living Standards Measurement Study collections and it is produced by the Uganda Bureau of Statistics. And the research uh, design they employed was a cross-sectional design. Now, this UNPS, the National uh, Panel Surveys, track 3,123 households. So it is a countrywide uh, study looking at a, and our concentration will be uh, on those uh, energy, a, on, on sections that have looked at energy. That's where we are going to uh, pick this data from. So within each stratum, within each stratum, that is the central, the Eastern, Western and Northern, The enumeration areas were selected. This data has already been collected with equal probability, with implicit stratification by urban rural and the district. Under uh, uh, data uh, collection again, they use a centralized approach of data collection And by doing this, nine mobile field teams are recruited from the headquarters and dispatched to different sampled areas. And each of these teams includes one supervisor, three enumerators, and there's another and one support staff. We go to the empirical model. Um, in the previous slides, we have talked about uh, this model. A, the censored quadratic almost ideal demand system that was uh, uh, developed last year. And the one that you can use in presence of endogenous variables or endogeneity. Um, so uh, this model, in this model, we have WI as household expenditure share of the ith energy source group for the household. So uh, we are saying that if you are spending on, for example, charcoal, what is uh, the expenditure share? Then we have price of energy source, I. We have EF as the household is total expenditure or a total income on all the energy sources in the demand system.
ZS, you know if we can remember our, our model, ZS, these are demographic variables. Those are the variables that will be included other than, other than price and income. And then we have the random error, which follows a normal distribution. It is identically and independently distributed. A, the natural log of A, P, it tries or it defines a term that is in our model. That is in our model on the previous slide. So we shall take into consideration uh, the demand uh, restrictions in our estimation. There are three restrictions. The additivity restriction that the sums of these parameters should equal to zero. We have the symmetry and then the homogeneity requirements. Objective number three. So through the cycle that I have presented already, after an evaluation of the income and the price elasticities in the QU model. We shall go ahead to look at the choices made by the households due to uh, changes in income levels. And these choices are in relation to uh, the type of uh, energy one chooses to use in the household. And in a way, we are also looking at the energy uh, ladder hypothesis with our uh, local data, that is the UNPS data. So this employs the same research design as an objective two, the same data types and sources, and the same data collection methods. Uh, we, use, we use a multinomial probit model. The multinomial probit model is used uh, because it helps in overcoming uh, the independence of irrelevant alternatives problem. Well, we noted that this is an, it is called unordered, an UN, unordered multinomial choice problem. And with this such unordered multinomial choice problem, one can employ a multinomial logit or a multinomial probit model. Now, whereas we have a, a lot of um, multinomial logit models being used in literature, but the multinomial uh, logit model is associated with uh, the problem of uh, independence of relevant alternatives. That's why we choose to use the multinomial uh, probit model. Now, the IIA or the independence of irrelevant alternatives implies uh, that, uh, for instance, it implies that the choice of say a liquefied petroleum gas over fuel wood as a main cooking fuel should not be affected by the inclusion of a, um, or exclusion of other alternative fuels. There should not uh, be um, that effect in the choice set. Now, 
the plausibility or the possibility of this a has been questioned in empirical literature. And some of the studies uh, say it is uh, unlikely to, to happen. The Magnolia project yields a robust estimates relative to the Magnolia logit estimates. That was a verified by Alvarez and Nagra, 1998. So robust standard errors. When we talk about robust standard errors, we are talking about um, unbiased standard errors of uh, the OLS coefficients, or nearly least squares coefficients, and a heteroscedasticity. And remember that uh, the presence of heteroscedasticity violates the gauss markov assumptions that are necessary to render OLS the best linear biased estimator. So uh, we further take it uh, to our model. The empirical, uh, we specify our multinomial probit model. And in this model, we have uh, Xi, uh, first of all, Trij looks at a, the a probits or the chance of one adopting a certain type of energy. Then we have Xi, which is the vector of household attributes. We have vector Zij, vector energy types and their attributes. We have the vector of parameters to be estimated. That is the psi, alpha one and alpha two and rho ij being the error term. Uh, so those are uh, the three objectives and uh, the methodologies included. Uh, thank you uh, very much members for listening. Uh, that is what, uh, those are my research uh, ideas. Uh, I thank you in advance uh, for the comments for improvement of my work. Thank you very much. Okay, thank you so much, Zofre, uh, for your presentation. Uh, I know we're going to discuss this work and I must appreciate everyone who has listened, but I, allow me to quickly acknowledge some of the new uh, senior colleagues who are, have logged in. Uh, we have been joined by Dr. Goretti. Uh, Gore Dr. Goretti, you're welcome. And uh, I want to, therefore to take this opportunity to invite us to engage Geoffrey, Geoffrey, thank you for your presentation, which has lasted uh, around 45 minutes. So I see the hand by our own Dr. Gideon. Dr. Gideon, you can make a comment. Uh, thank you, Chair. Uh, I think it's my pleasure to start because I have power challenges. Uh, Geoffrey, thank you for the presentation. Uh, I have some few observations, and I think I will start from uh, the research contribution uh, where I was able to pay attention uh, to you when you are presenting. Uh, I feel that that is a section you may need to spend more time uh, to expound on what you have already elaborated. 
uh, my view, I did not see uh, where you are coming from. What do we know? What is it that we should know? If you are looking at research contribution, uh, you are looking at the contribution to knowledge. And that is a section that should guide you uh, by the time you come up with these uh, uh, objectives. We should be knowing where are these objectives going to come from. Uh, basically, if we have really uh, got clearly the contribution to knowledge, it is much easier to get uh, where these objectives are coming from. For example, you looked at the research design issue. Uh, you tried to look at some models that were used, and uh, you said no study has used uh, iterated least square method as one of the issues you have. But generally, where are these things coming from? As a scholar, since you are contributing to knowledge, and even when you say there's no study, are you sure by the time you finish, uh, you will not have a study? Use of qualifiers may be dangerous again. Um, for me, I did not see that coming out very well. Uh, you may need to do something seriously there. And then by the time you finish, uh, if you look at the first objective, uh, who are you looking at? And, and, and uh, you want to analyze the household energy demand and the factors affecting. Now, I do not see why should you do that. Uh, did you find that there is an issue there? And um, again, I, to me, I seem to see that this needs to be separated. Uh, they need to be smart. Uh, you can, first of all, uh, Look at household energy demand, and the other one look at the factors to make this really uh, being smart. And the other one, you can see if you look at the second objective again, I do not see where it is coming from. Uh, I, I, I think uh, you may need really to have that consistency of thought. Uh, the same applies the third objective. One, I know you rushed into the modeling, modeling well, which is okay, but then why should you use such a models? Uh, did you find that there was something uh, really very uh, attractive to use some of these models in attempting to answer this? So for me, uh, my major, major, major issue is how you are contributing to knowledge and therefore, I would be able to see uh, where these objectives are coming from. Uh, but Geoffrey, basically, I want to appreciate you, your work. Yes, you have, you have that's a journey. And the, the fact that uh, I am able to raise some concerns, it is, means there's some good work that you are doing. But basically, think about this. Uh, since I'm the one starting, allow me to give chance to other people. Uh, thank you, Geoffrey. Thank you so much, Dr. Gideon. <clears throat> Let me invite uh, Dr. Joshua Okina, then George Kasole. <clears throat> thank you, our dear moderator. I want to thank the presenter. There is evidence that he is getting formatted. But as he gets formatted, we could make a few comments for him to continue refining his thinking so that he can talk to every one of us, even if we are not in the economics field. Now, drawing from what my colleague has just stated, what is it that you are studying? You are saying household demand for energy in Uganda. Would it make sense for you to be specific about the kind of energy that you want to study? 
Because as he rightly stated, where do you want to contribute? Knowledge. So right from your topic, your area of, your area of interest, what you want to study, to me, I don't think you are so far clear about what you want to investigate. So we can see you emerge with a concrete contribution to the right line of thinking. So I don't really know what you want to study. And this is why you had a very clogged statement of the problem. There is why you, end, you, you went into saying, how, however, after giving us a variety of interventions, and I thought you would land somewhere as far as a particular type of energy is probably concerned in Uganda, the consumption. But you seemed to eventually get to some tendency towards confusion. I am not so sure of what the problem is that you want to explain so that we can follow you clearly. You have not been able to tell us what you want clearly to study. And the problem is not yet clear that you want to investigate. And then why do you intend to study what you have not specified? These are critical philosophical orientations that you must make, make clear so that we can logically follow your conceptualization and be able to appreciate the contribution to knowledge. Now, the other aspects which my colleague has also talked about, what your objectives are as stated. Yeah, you might be true in your own way, but they seem to be so unsmart. They are not specific. I think this is because you have not been very certain of what you want to study. For instance, you say number one, to analyze household energy demand and identify that is really the confusion. Why do you have two intentions in one? That's the unsmartness, unsmart nature of your objective formulation. If particularly it is right, because I'm not convinced about what you want to study. Now, but you say to empirically estimate energy demand in Uganda. What energy demand are you talking about? Huh? And calculate price and income elasticities. All, all of this is possible, but you are confusing science. Can we be consistent, ordered, and specific in what we want to target and generate information about so that we can be able to contribute constructively and scientifically? Number three, you say, to analyze the energy choices for lighting and cooking that are made available, that are made by the different income groups in Uganda. Eh. What is my overall assessment? I want to appreciate the fact that you are formulating a mind that you want to investigate and make a contribution. But I think if we can if we can be clear about what we want to study, we shall be able to come up with a clear statement of the problem. We shall be able to come up with the purpose of your investigation. We shall be able to come up with a clear set of objectives that will help us arrive or address the purpose of the study so that we are not mad, we, 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 we are not, we, we, we do not, we do not stay around objectives that are not clearly formulated. I appreciate the methodology I've come up with. 
But I think it is too early for you to be so complex about how you intend to undertake a study that is not yet clear. So I want to appreciate those theories and more those you want to appreciate, but to attack with clear study. Thank you so much. Okay, thank you so much. I think before George comes in, uh, I would like to draw Geoffrey that re reflect carefully on the comments which have been raised by Dr. Gideon and Dr. Joshua. They are very critical, very, very critical. Yes, George. Uh, thank you, Doctor, and thank you, Geoffrey, for your presentation. Uh, most, some of my points have been hinted on by Dr. Joshua and Dr. Gideon but I wish to raise a few issues as well. Uh, one, Geoffrey, in your background, you have not yet brought, you have not well brought out the energy mix very well, and you have continuously narrowed energy to electricity. Then when we came to the problem statement, I've seen you also, uh, we, I haven't uh, felt the gap uh, because I find it a little weak, because you still narrow it down to electricity. And you, it is the same applies to your, to, to, to somehow your, 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 your objectives. Then you somehow hint, uh, concentrate on electricity, yet you are addressing energy. Then when you look at, when I come up down to your theory, you haven't also explained why you have uh, chosen the consumer theory. Okay. And I, I think these are issues you also need, you need to look at. Otherwise, we thank you for your work so far. And I think you, are, you, you kind of accommodate these observations. You will be able to improve your work. Thank you very much. Okay, thank you, George. Uh, maybe I, I'm going to take another round of comments, but um, uh, since there's a similarity in the comments, and um, I, I also feel that the, this is the area the Geoffrey needs to reflect carefully. Maybe I would want to invite Geoffrey to say one or two things about the comments. Uh, uh, then we can can maybe move. And the, as others are organizing to, to raise up more comments. Yes. Thank yeah. you very much, Dr. Koche. I would like to thank Dr. Gideon, Dr. Joshua, Dr. Joji Kasuli for those very important comments. I, 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 I think uh, at this time, I just need to listen attentively so that I, I can adjust. Um, because Dr. Joshua has uh, talked about uh, the research uh, contribution, which I need to uh, clearly uh, bring out. I think uh, I had some mix up of uh, what we mean by research contribution and then research gap. Somehow uh, those two, a distinction to me was not uh, very clear, but uh, I think I need to, to uh, read further uh, so that uh, I realign my work and so and the, in the next presentation, I'm uh, very clear on what I am concentrating on. I also take note of uh, Dr. Joshua's comments. Um, about what I want to study, but uh, basically I'm looking at energy demand. There are quite a number of studies in literature that are looking at energy demand. And this uh, energy demand 
is uh, the most the uses uh, price and income as the uh, main predictors in most of these uh, studies. And uh, uh, when we talk about energy, we mean uh, those different uh, energies or energy types that uh, I tried to uh, present in the energy ladder uh, hypothesis and the uh, energy stack hypothesis. But uh, I objectively take these comments. I need to look at each of them so that uh, I work towards uh, a better uh, output. Thank you very much, Doctor. Okay, thank you. I see this hand by Bernard. But uh, I think if you look, listen to the three uh, comments, uh, you clearly see that there is need for consistency, right from the topic, the background, the problem statement, uh, the research objectives the theories and the methodology. <clears throat> uh, even me when I, when I look at, of course, I, I looked at your presentation before you sent it to us like yesterday. You see that most times new things emerge, new things are emerging. But I think the consistent of thought is very important such that even the purported contribution of knowledge which you are saying is clearly reflected. So I think as even your uh, reflecting on the comments, I think that's a critical issue you need to uh, need to need to 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 to, to see through. Uh, so I'm again going to take the next round of comments, Professor Laura, uh, Slivia, and then Bernard. Uh, thank you, Michael. Sylvia and Bernard's hands were up before me. I let them speak. Then I come after them. Okay, uh, Slavia, Bernard. Okay, um, uh, thank you very much, uh, Dr. Michael. And uh, thank you, our presenter. Professor, thank you for allowing us to speak first. It might it would have been difficult for some of us to speak after you. Uh, well, um, I just have a few observations um, uh, in addition to what uh, the earlier people have raised and uh, starting from the title, my brother, I think the title is quite, I don't know, more of an article than, yeah, we need to refine the title to, to depict a, a, a dissertation and not a research, more of a research article. Then, Maybe you'll just think about it, it's a, it's a suggestion. And then when we go to the background, Jeffrey, like all the other speakers have said, there is a mix up of concepts. You're raising so many issues. You talk about demand, you talk about different energies without settling for any, you bring in the issue of productive use, you bring in the issue of production, you bring in the issue of so many things that actually have confused the people to, to, to get to know what exactly you are studying. And I'm sure it has, it has also confused you yourself, okay? So to me, I feel as if the gap has not come out totally. You are giving us evidence of what is happening in the landscape of energy sector in Uganda, both on the demand and supply side, but you have not been able to bring out what is bothering you and what is motivating this study in your background. And my simple advice is that maybe you try to look at the standard heuristic of how the background should be written that can help you bring out the gap and the motivation to this study without saying so many things, you know, uh, relating to the energy sector. First, you need to tell us maybe what is, the, what is this energy demand you're talking about? Specifically, what type of energy you need to calm down because it is too much, it's too wide, too broad. And then, why does it even matter? Why is it an issue? Why should we listen to it? Okay. 
So after that, you so now go ahead and talk about what is wrong because then you are taking us to the gap. What is motivating this study? What is wrong? What is bothering you? And when we try to bring out what is wrong, you have to start from a global perspective as you go down to the local or your study context. So that the problem is a big issue. It's not just your problem, or it's not only you seeing, but it's something that affecting everybody and therefore will necessitate you to conduct the research, okay? So I will not exactly state for you, but look at it in that way. So the first line is telling us what is this energy demand you are talking about to clarify or to put everyone into context. And then the next line, you are now telling us why it matters. You know, why should we pay attention? Why should everyone think about it? In the next line, you are now bringing in the gap. What is wrong? What is bothering you? What is bothering everybody? And this gap should come, you know, from the global perspective to the local context, okay? And when you go there now, in the next, you should be now telling us, okay, what is known about this gap? You know, what is known about this gap? And therefore, what remains unknown. So there you are taking us to what we call a research gap. And this research gap will have both the practical, these things that you're putting in the background, but also most importantly, the empirical. Because at PhD, the interest is on the empirical knowledge contribution. So where is the knowledge gap? And how do you intend to contribute? So the comments of your um, contribution is far-fetched. It is because you have not created a gap in the background. You've not created a space that will justify or motivate your research, okay? So you need to work on this background very well to bring out the research gap that will now take you to your contribution, okay? Yeah, so, um, and then also within these statistics, I guess you may have to be careful and specifically because you have not decided on what exactly or what type of energy you're looking at, you're making statements like electricity access is at 28%, which type of electricity? Because if you look at the, the, the reports, the current reports you're, you're citing, the UNHS 2019-20, unless you're referring to grid. Grid electricity is at 28%, but when we bring in the, the decentralized and the off-grid systems, access goes beyond 50, 50%, okay? So again, you need to be very specific on that, okay? So um, I don't want to say so much, but your background is full of uh, uh, citations from reports, M, M Ministry of Energy, Rubos, and to us, I think you should go more into empirical studies so that you can be able to create space for yourself. I won't comment about objectives. I won't comment about the methodology yet because you need to fine tune your research gap and the motivation for your study first. Thank you. Thank you so much, Bernard. Uh, Dr. Mukot, you. you are not Bernard. <laughs> Olivia, we can swap. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Uh, thank you, Dr. Okoche. And thank you, Geoffrey, for coming out or stepping out to share your work with us. Uh, I, I like always listening to your ideas. This is work in progress. It's, we are all on this trail. Uh, there is nothing really to push you back and uh, whatever feelings or issues people are raising is really to strengthen this whole journey for us or for you. Uh, just also a few things, if we can uh, start from the background, I think Sylvia has uh, walked you through what I had to mention. Whatever the list also just wanted to emphasize one or two things, learning from being told on this platform over the several and years now. In addition to Sylvia I think what she was going to say on the first line or two, what your area is 
it is the energy demand. Uh, we speak, we, we, we gazette that you specify that you step your feet on that. This is what you have been told uh, on energy, household energy demand. And uh, therefore, why does it matter? Why should we concerned? Why should Uganda be concerned about it? We have been given tips. Is it a policy issue? Is it an environmental question? Is it an economic development value? Uh, just to know that uh, to, to raise uh, interest in people, uh, the economics and the policy usually is a very uh, good point to stand on given where we are facing and where we are going. Uh, but uh, Geoffrey, as a, also we move forward, our energy demand in general, you are likely to face, that's why we are saying as a to your position, you are likely to face comments from environmentalists, from those who are investing in energy efficiency. Are you promoting energy demand here? Why should we increase energy demand? Or you are attacking it from the other side of the face. If we are raising energy demand, because people are going to come to you and say you are the one, are you, you are not promoting sustainability or this environmental impact. So that's why you have to be a little particular and specific on your issue and how you are going to raise it. Energy demand is good, but energy demand is also bad. So those are just the thoughts where we have to come from. But of course, in the economic sense, countries that are developed or are developing are associated with higher energy demand. I think from that position is where you can see uh, uh, legal positions on. Now, on the proposal, is you give us the supply side position. Maybe I missed it, but the demand again, which comes back. <coughs> yes, Bernard. It's wrong with our demand. Bernard, <coughs> Bernard. Because, Bernard yes. please speak louder, better. Okay, um, so I have a bad gadget today. Okay, um, that was just mentioning the problem, Geoffrey. I think we are missing the demand side as well in the back in the problem, which should also depict where the gap is in terms of what to mention. Uh, Geoffrey, I'll speak it, uh, skip the rest and maybe move to the methodology. Um, can we please go there and see? And the, okay, I want to start with um, the second objective. I think that's where we had, where I want to start from, from objective number two. Okay, right, I could go to the next slide. I think that's where we want to start from. So it is, I think, before you specify or you give this specification, I possibly it is in your write-up anyway, but maybe a summary of the general specification, which is largely the theory here. And from what you mentioned, this is a Marshallian demand function, if I'm not mistaken. And the, we are talking of prices of energy, which the household is demanding, prices of other energies, as well as income. So I think you should have maybe started from that position, uh, the Marshallian demand function, which defines consumer theory, and also preferences in, what, in terms of what units or households consume before we come to this particular uh, position. Because the I've, I'm, I'm sincere, I've not worked practically with the uh, almost ideal demand system, but theoretically, 
Uh, that's where it starts from. That's where it draws its background and foundations from. And uh, so its assumptions that arrive with that before we even go for the quadratic or the censored one. I think you need to start from that general, general position first. And then we start developing up to this particular uh, stage. That would just add understanding for everyone, especially people who are, are not in this particular uh, area. And the, on objective number three, it's estimation as well. Uh, you are mentioning on the estimation, you are mentioning yes, multinomial probits. You are talking of choices and also stacking. And you are going for multinomial probit, which is fine, I think. But uh, you are talking of the non ordered or the unordered. But uh, when we are starting, you are, you, are, you are displaying an ordering or preference. So I don't think you want to pronounce it that, of course, probital logic multinomial doesn't necessarily have to be in order that maybe you should just do away with the word uh, ordered here because and I'm non ordered because your theory that is bringing you to this is actually an ordered theory. If you are stacking, you are giving us a preference, you are giving us an order. And if you use it in your estimation, then people say, but you said non ordered. So uh, that's the small observation I also wanted to add on that. But I think, Geoffrey, we can always have ex added extended discussions and move it further. Thank you. Thank you, Chair. Thank you, <clears throat> Professor Laura. Okay, uh, maybe before Professor Laura comes, I see our mentor, yeah. Professor. Joseph Ndai, I just uh, allow a mentor to make the hey, comment. Hey, Michael. <laughs> yes, Professor. Lola, you can go first. I'll, I'll, I'll come <laughs> after you. <laughs> Michael, respect the seniors. <laughs> the seniors speak, <laughs> speak last. <laughs> they come to crown what we have said. Uh, okay. Uh, thank you, Professor Antai and uh, Michael. Michael, can you hear me? Yes, yes. Yeah, I'm very Okay, uh, over to you, Joshua. Uh, Joshua, can you just flash your 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 topic. I want to appreciate everyone who has uh, given comments to Joshua. Uh, actually, most of the comments that I had noted have been raised, but there are just a few areas that I'm going to emphasize. As usual, for me, <laughs> I always want to understand the concept before I can even look at anything else. So here I am uh, listening to, hey, it's Godfrey, not Joshua, sorry. I don't know why I, I put Joshua, sorry, uh, Joffrey. <clears throat> so as I was listening to your uh, presentation of your background. Then I went back to the topic and I'm seeing household energy, uh, demand for energy, household demand for energy. So I asked myself, mm -hmm, what is this animal called household demand for energy? In other words, you are looking at energy demand, okay? You're looking at energy demand. So I asked myself, in your presentation, what is household, what is energy demand? So, Geoffrey, as you uh, capture the other comments on your introduction, I want you to spend time 
on internalizing your main variable. Your, your main variable here is energy demand. What is energy demand? What do others um, say about it? How do they operationalize it? And how have they measured it? <coughs> how have they measured it? Excuse me. So that when you now come out to, you know, write up your introduction, you're, you are very clear. That's why you've received those comments on uh, where's the gap, where, where, what's your point of departure. When you are presenting, you are given um, uh, statistics on access and so forth. And then uh, the issue of demand, okay, in short, didn't come out clearly. So uh, try to spend time on dissecting this, this particular variable with concrete authorities so that, you know, when you speak, you are saying you, this is the this is the view that you are taking and you know this is the path you're taking it started like this it went here it passed through this and now this is where you are you know energy demand energy demand sylvia came in to ask which energy there's so much out there which energy so have that at the back of your mind then also in your background, I saw you mention, uh, give us statistics of uh, 2019. We are halfway 2020. Are you saying that um, right now we do not have any improvement? Uh, are we still stat stat static? I don't know. Uh, you know, when you want to uh, bring out an issue, a research problem must be a recent thing, something recent. Okay, you can have like a trend over the years, this has been the picture and today it is like this, you know, to show that there is an, a concern, a magnitude of an issue that needs to be tackled the magnitude of an issue that needs to be tackled has to come out very, very clearly, okay? Again, this must be in line with what you have conceptualized your DV to be, okay? Yeah, um, so there I, I had noted the issue of 2019 versus 2022. Uh, then, um you you also kept on comparing uh uganda with india i don't know whether you are comparing uganda with india or africa with india i just uh, uh, in my notebook here i just said why india why india do we have similar uh similar what uh, similar factors affecting us similar contextual factors, similar, or what was the basis for India? Because you, you overemphasize India, India, India. And I'm not saying it's wrong, but you need in your presentation, you need to justify why India? Okay, why didn't you say US or whatever? Why India? Okay. Then um, still in your introduction, you mentioned that your contribution is going to be uh, the use of the Q, uh, I don't know how to pronounce this, you, you, you shortened it to Q-U-A-I-D-S, censured, I don't know what, <clears throat> by CARO 2021. I didn't get you clearly on that. Are you saying that um, that is your contribution or that is the model you're going to use and if that is the model you're going to use are you trying to replicate what carol 2021 did i didn't get this clearly okay um yeah then on research objective number one i want to 
to say like Sylvia, she she said she will not comment <laughs> on the on the research objectives because the other parts are still not not yet well aligned. But still, um, as you are trying to align that, also think about your research objectives. Research objective number one, uh, you said if you can just go there, yes. If um, go to methodology section where you say research objective one under methodology. Can you scroll there? You mentioned something on research design, a meta-analytic research design. Uh, when you look at the, the um, when you look at the research objective, I asked myself, uh, what what are you trying to achieve? Because I thought you are trying to study. Uh, I thought you are trying to study energy demand in Uganda. Okay, so you are interested in knowing those factors affecting household energy demand in Uganda. What you have here is, I think, what literature has. Now, that would have been part of your systematic literature review, and then it forms part of your literature review. But then when it comes to the research objectives, I thought you would contextualize to Uganda or something like that. I don't know. I don't know why you did it like this, but that is something that you need to think about. All your research objectives must be contextualized. Are you studying Uganda? Are you studying a particular uh, district in Uganda? You know, that's my thinking right now. Okay. Other comments have already been raised. Uh, I want to avoid repetition. So I will uh, end my submission here. Over to you, Chair. Thank you. Okay, thank you. Anything else will come our mentor, Professor Joseph Ndai. Thank you, Chair. And uh, thank you very much, Geoffrey, uh, for your contribution uh, in terms of uh, coming up with an area that uh, that is interesting, I should say. Um, I think there are a few things that you need to think about. Um, uh, of course, A, you need to, I hope you've taken note of all the comments. I agree with the uh, comments given by the previous uh, speakers. Uh, make sure that you address them. They are pertinent, very important, and you shouldn't lose sight of them. Uh, I just want to add my voice to theirs. And uh, I don't know why you have moved to this other first tip. Uh, page. I wanted actually to start from where Lola had stopped. That research, I think it was research objective one, right? If you look at um, that statement, objective one to analyze household energy demand, and you compare it with the one that you have under research objectives, the two are at variance. They are not the same. Uh, this is different from the other one. Uh, if you could just flash it uh, very fast, uh, I hope you have read this one here. Uh, the main factors affecting household energy demand in literature. Uh, when you look at the other one uh, and identify the main factors, uh, um, okay, I think that is a little bit okay, but it may be consistent with what Lola said. But let's go back to the other one, where you were. Uh, I want to comment about meta-analysis. Uh, meta-analysis is not a meta-analytic research design. It's not a research design. And I think uh, if you were present at three, uh, this gentleman called the last room, uh, took us uh, well he showed us a video a, a video clip 
uh, about research designs and some of those things were discussed and if in, I think last week and these have been covered extensively now just to give you an idea of what a meta analysis what a meta analysis is a meta analysis is actually a subset of systematic review or reviews and uh, I think we covered them for around three weeks and uh, this meta-analysis is a method for systematically combining uh, pertinent qualitative and quantitative study data from several selected studies and the objective here is to develop a single conclusion that seems to have greater statistical power and uh, that conclusion you arrive at is statistically stronger than the analysis of any single study uh, due to uh, the increased number of subjects and of course uh, uh, also greater diversity that you you have greater diversity among subjects um, so you 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 need to uh, to know what you are going to do otherwise at the end of the day you are going to confuse uh, these but i think you can go back to the internet and uh, search and you'll find a lot of interesting material about meta-analysis. Uh, two, uh, when I saw your topic, I picked interest in what you wanted to study. So I rushed very fast and I went to the internet actually. I did, uh, I went to databases uh, to see what exists. And um, uh, actually the questions that have been raised by um, uh, my previous, uh, well, the previous speakers uh, bring out that kind of uh, confusion that I also saw on the internet uh, when you start talking about energy demand. And uh, I want to encourage you to actually uh, first go and do an exploration uh, before you zero down to uh, what you want to do. Uh, for example, uh, I discovered that uh, there is uh, somebody at the School of Economics and Business, Norwegian University of Life Sciences, uh, and um, uh, this lady is called Grace Alinaitre. Uh, she has a topic that is exactly the same as yours, household energy demand in Uganda. Uh, and she has written, if you read, I, I tried to upload it on the chat for me, it failed. I don't know why. Uh, maybe my internet is not really supporting me to do that. But uh, it's exactly the same. Same topic, same topic. So, and, um, and I think somewhere I heard you say that uh, nobody has done this. Uh, and, and this lady, I think, is uh, doing the same in Uganda. Household energy demand in Uganda, and you was also household demand for energy in Uganda. Hmm? Professor, so professor, professor, I can actually send it to him because I have a whole database of energy studies so far in Uganda. I was compiling for Ministry of Energy, so I have that exact study. I will share it with Geoffrey. Yes, thank I you. Think, uh, I think that's very good, Sylvia. If you can do that, uh, I think he hasn't. You haven't done uh, really enough in that area. Uh, I, also ha I also saw another study uh, done by World Bank, World Bank Group, and published in June 2021, and talks about the same thing. Uh, I also saw another one uh, published in the Journal of Helion, and this is 2022, very, very, very recent, 2022, um, and uh, it talks about household demand. Right. And uh, there is another one, uh, energy demand model of the household sector. And, and, and of course, this one is relatively old. But uh, I got an impression that you haven't read uh, quite enough in the area where you want to undertake this study. So I think that is, uh, those are some of the things that you may have to think about. Uh, two. When I saw your topic, um, and uh, again consistent with the comments made by uh, my friend uh, uh, Wabukara, right? Uh, I, I I got I, I got a little bit worried uh, because I thought that you wanted to increase um, 
energy demand but more specifically biomass energy because that's where you started and I was wondering whether we shall have um, any tree left on this planet earth uh, and more specifically in Uganda uh, so uh, and, and when I when I heard you talk about some of the theories uh, the energy stack mode and so forth uh, so uh, I think this means that you need to be big, very clear right from the beginning the type of uh, energy that you're talking about uh, if you want to increase for all electricity and the others uh, including biomass I think you need to give us uh, a justification as to why you should increase demand for biomass energy um, I think generally speaking those are the few that I thought I should add to the list that uh, you have already uh, obtained from uh, my colleagues I rest my case chair okay thank you so much uh, I think Geoffrey uh, if I were you really I'd be very happy because those are very very good comments you have received from and the, the beauty about the comments most of them really uh, are similar and also further strengthen areas you need to improve uh, but maybe let me have you back and maybe make a few rejoinders here what you think is critical to be how you can go about it and Geoffrey please uh, thank you very much Dr. Koche and thank you very much members for all these uh, valuable comments um I would like to recognize a or thank uh, Professor Laura uh, to thank uh, Madame Sylvia uh, to thank uh, Mr. Wabukala Bennett uh, to thank uh, Professor Antai um, and all a uh, those who have given me comments for improvement. Uh, I take uh, these comments uh, openly with, uh, with a lot of thanks. Now, I, uh, I wanted to comment on uh, literature, uh, the literature that I have reviewed. Uh, uh, first of all, about uh, energy demand uh, in Uganda. I think before I forget, I'll start from uh, a, the study that uh, a, a Dr. Professor Antai has talked about from a Norwegian lady. The Norwegian lady is used is uh, uh, doing uh, or has done a similar study. Uh, number one, he, the methodology. I don't know whether maybe I'll be I'll be I'll be ad, uh, advised on that. The methodology is using is not using a sensor the QU uh, is not using the same methodology. So I thought that there will be that uh, variation or difference. Then the other is that he, the data he has used he used the UNPS data, but um, uh, for 20 was it 2013 2014? So I thought there was some variation. Then I have also looked at Helion. In fact, Helion was published this year. It is a new publication. I uh, don't uh, very well remember the topic, but uh, Helion seems to be quite, uh, actually uh, Helion has not used the uh, demand systems. Uh, otherwise, uh, I, uh, I thank you all uh, for the comments. Uh, mainly I'm noting them down. I, I appreciate uh, a doctor's explanation of the meta-analysis. Uh, when I read about meta-analysis, uh, I got uh, a, interested in this because there is a lot of contestation in this energy demand the Geoffrey, Geoffrey before you go to meta compare these researches Geoffrey before you go to meta analysis um, let me yes, let me just comment about what you've just said uh, relating to the journal articles yes you may have seen the journal articles but you never read and critiqued and the information does not appear in your background so nobody will get an idea, any sense as to where you are coming from and where you are going. Because if people have done studies in the same area, 
uh, they have done certain things. So you need to give us the state um, uh, of, of, of knowledge in that area. So how far has knowledge developed in that area? And uh, how do you intend to add something to what already exists? That kind of thing it does not exist in the background. You're talking about different things altogether. So the reason why you do uh, that um, uh, systematic review of literature is for you to uh, explore what already exists and then be able to provide your point of departure. Unfortunately, that is missing. Uh, so you may have to go back and critique, read, critique, and then uh, get uh, s s some bit of uh, a direction where you need to go. Uh, I, okay, you can continue. I stop. All right. Uh, thank you very much, uh, Professor. Uh, indeed, uh, I'll go back and uh, rethink and realign uh, these ideas um, following uh, the advice uh, that I have been given. I think, I, I, well, I have actually downloaded quite a number of this, uh, research articles in this field. And I think if I sit down and concentrate, I'll, I'll, I'll streamline my work to, to have a better a presentation. Thank you, members. Thank you, professors, for the comments. Okay, thank you so much, uh, Geoffrey again. I know it is uh, a serious, uh, uh, there's a lot of improvements you'll be able to make. And I really thank members for the comments which have been raised. And uh, all of us will, be, uh, will agree with me that learning is taking place and um, a lot of improvements have taken place in the platform. If you see the comments, if you see the presentations, uh, thank you so much. So we're coming to the end of our morning call, and uh, I would like uh, to invite uh, Professor uh, James to make closing remarks. Then we have Dr. Uh, Dr. Goretti close with a word of prayer. Yes, Professor Thank James. Thank you, Dr. Kech, or Kech, you call it pronunciation? <laughs> Sorry about that. Um, thank you, Geoffrey, for your presentation and our mentor, Professor Ntai. And by the way, I congratulate uh, Professor Orobia for that uh, achievement. Uh, uh, the students on the call and all other doctors and professors that have attended this presentation. I think there's a lot of learning that is taking place and uh, I've been impressed with the, the comment that some studies which have been uh, already published in the same area and that could be a very dangerous situation if somebody doesn't recognize them so that we see the point of departure. And uh, I also liked the, 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 the video that was given in the beginning and one of the highlights of that uh, video the issue of why do we use the Pearson correlation at times and not the Spearman's correlation coefficient. So I think that was well clarified. I thank you for this arrangement because that's a common question I get with my students and even some commentators when there are presentations like this one. So I think there's a lot of learning taking place and the issues of energy, of course, are contentious. Uh, climate change, environmental problems, a result of uh, the biomass and other carbon dioxide diseases, particularly in our country here. Yeah, already we have statistics showing some of the uh, dangerous places where these carbon uh, dioxide gases have been re uh, released in the atmosphere. So I think I thank you, Jeffrey, for this presentation and the organizers for this. Over to you, Dr. Koche. Thank you very much for the presentations. Yes, Dr. Goretti, you could close with words of prayer. Uh, I would like to thank uh, all the presenters, the, the people who have made comments this morning to make sure that Geoffrey improves on his work. 
um, the concept of energy demand in Uganda. Uh, I would like us to thank the Lord for the knowledge that has been shared uh, this morning, different comments from people uh, to widen our spectrum of understanding uh, the energy uh, sector and also uh, the factors they are in. I pray for the Lord that we continue to interact and be uh, beneficial to one another. And we pray for good health and energy and wisdom and understanding. In your name, I have prayed. Amen. 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 Thank you and good day. Thank you. Thanks, everyone. Thanks, professors. Thanks, doctors. <laughs> good weekend, please. Thank you.